Hello. I would like to start off by saying that I'm writing this while hiding in a forest. I'm going to write about everything that had happened a couple of days ago. I have no idea how this is happening. I don't know what's going on with all these siren posts. Stay safe everyone. I just need time to write down everything that has happened. My phone will die soon so when, or if I make it out of here, I will write more soon. I would ask you to call the cops but I'm 100% sure that they would be useless. I don't even know where I am. Where the hell do I even begin? I'll just tell you guys what happened the night of June 18th at 2.47am. I was watching a scary movie in bed at the time, and a jump scare had happened. It scared the hell out of me but a second later the TV started glitching and an alert went off. I thought that it was an amber alert at first, but it wasn't. The screen was really dark red, almost like blood. It had white lettering that said shit like, Go outside and don't be afraid. And then it would switch to, Reverse, get the final piece. And my personal favorite, Open the doors, let us all come in. We're healing. I swear that I heard sobbing behind the sounds of the warp sirens. The TV went blank. I realized that I was frozen and I couldn't move, no matter how hard I tried. I glanced back at the TV, only to see my name in bold letters taking up all of it. Alright, this has to be some kind of prank that my brother did. He knows how to connect his phone to my TV via Bluetooth. It has to be that. Chris, this isn't funny. Stop messing with me while I'm trying to watch a movie. I yelled. No answer. I tried to squirm around and leave my bed but I wouldn't budge. It was like I was being controlled. I started to panic but then I heard my name. The TV said my freaking name. It didn't sound like my brother or my mom or dad. It sounded like nothing that I'd ever heard before. If an animal could speak and wail with a high pitched scream at the same time, it would be that. I had enough. I quietly said, Who are you? The TV replied in a weird layered voice sounding breathless now. Harper. My name if you need to know. How did it know me? Did it know me? I stopped asking myself when the alert buzzing got louder and louder until it sounded like a dog whistle but I was being affected by it. I wanted to cover my ears but I couldn't. Just when I thought my ears were going to explode from the unbearable pitch, the unknown force paralyzing me was finally released. I quickly turned off the TV and I went back to go look out of my window. I just had this urge to look, like a trance. It was pitch black. I couldn't see anything, like a starless space. The streetlights are usually on at this time, I thought to myself. I stared outside for a while, looking for any source of light. There was none. I couldn't even see the moon. I jumped back when sirens came screaming through the neighborhood, waking my family up. I'm sure it woke the whole damn neighborhood up as well. I couldn't see any police cars or ambulances nearby. I didn't see any light. It sounded like it was coming from everywhere. Outside my house. Me. It was in my mind. And it didn't sound normal either. You know those videos on YouTube that make the audio all creepy and deep and glitchy? And distorted and all that. That is what it sounded like. Much more surreal though. That haunting sound will probably never leave my brain for as long as I live. I heard screeching in the distance that didn't sound human either, like the alert on the TV. It was as loud as the sirens but I only heard it for two seconds. It reminded me of those skinwalker stories, all the screeching stuff. Maybe it was the tornado warning practice, but no. Those only happen on Wednesdays, I think. 
As the sirens went off, the lamplights were back on again and the sky was cleared. The moon shone again and I could see the stars. It was no longer pitch black. The cloud of darkness was finally gone. The dead silence was eerie. No crickets or crunching of branches, and my street is right in the middle of the forest. It was like everything was dead. As the darkness cleared, I realized that every house's door was opened. I winced my eyes back at my faint view of my front door, flinching when I saw that it was open. I raced down the stairs, turning all the lights on and I slammed it shut. I locked it and I made sure that every single window and door were too. But how did it get open? I was going back upstairs when I saw my dad on the floor, with his arms and legs strewn on the floor like he was making a snow angel. Dad! I ran over to him and I pulled at his arm. What? How did... He muttered as I tried to get him off of the floor. Did you open the door, Dad? I don't even remember getting on the floor. What is that noise? It's going around the neighborhood. Everybody's door is open too. Look. I stopped in my tracks while pointing to the window near the front door. As everybody was staring blankly at my house. Me, if anything, just standing there. My body went cold and the hairs on my neck stood up. What's wrong? My dad did the same. What the hell? My dad left to get my mom and brother. I've never seen anything like this before, only in the movies. On the comedic side, it sort of looked like a low budget us thinking about it. My dad called the cops and there was no answer. I tried every phone in my house and no answer. After a while, the siren stopped but I could still faintly hear the same distorted deep sound ringing in my ears. Damn it! I yelped, slamming the useless smartphone on the table. I felt so helpless and frustrated. I just wanted to go to bed. My family covered up all of the windows, and we all slept on the couch together, my dad having his shotgun by his side. The next morning, everyone was gone. I looked around in a hurry, only to see them in the kitchen having breakfast, happily as can be. I asked them all if everything was okay. The only response was from my mom, who replied with, Do you want pancakes, sweetie? Or maybe some eggs? You need some protein. Oh, whatever, it's summer. You can have both. You look so out of it. Sit down, sit down. She said in a cheerful yet empty, blank and emotionless tone. It didn't even sound like her. Her hair was all done up nicely. She had makeup on with bright cherry red lipstick, and she was in a pink dress. My mom hates pink. I stood there in shock, thinking my mother has never spoken to me like that before. She usually just greets me for a second and then puts down a bowl of cereal. It didn't take me long to realize that my entire family was dressed like a preppy rich family and had a country club or some stuff. Even my brother, a boy of no respect for suits and ties or fancy clothing in general, was dressed in a light plaid button-up shirt. He would never wear this. I turned to my dad, also in a polo shirt, a polo shirt, and I shakily asked, Is everything alright? I have no idea what you mean, he stated in a stern tone. I'm fine, your mother's fine, your brother's fine, hopefully you are too. Now sit down please. I sat down more confused as ever and I ate. I looked down and I was astonished at the fact that I had switched from a hoodie and sweatpants to a pastel blue corduroy skirt and a tucked in white, loose off the shoulder blouse. I knew for a fact that I didn't own any of these clothes. I figured that they were my mom's. A million more thoughts rushed through my head. There was no explaining this. I swore that I was in my comfy clothes just a second ago. 
how could I brush this off? I wanted to ask more questions, but I was too afraid. And not wanting to anger my so-called dad again. But then again, it was the best breakfast set I had ever had. That was the only part of the day that I really did enjoy. I almost took a bite out of my pancakes when I looked down at a rotten, hardened piece of strange-looking meat covered with maggots. I dropped my silverware and I staggered out of my seat, covering my mouth to keep me from vomiting from the stench. I looked around and everything was gray. All the color was gone. No more fancy table dinners with lace cloth. All the food was rotten. I gagged and I almost ran into the bathroom when my mom randomly appeared in front of me and grabbed my arm tightly. Oh, where are you going, honey bunch? Don't you want to finish your breakfast? She grinned and looked back at the table. And so did I, seeing my dad and brother staring at me blankly. Her grip tightened, almost cutting off the circulation of my arm, still grinning at me while her eyes widening. Oh, I'm so full, mom. I just want to go lay down. Is that okay with you? I said, trying to act all preppy, even though I was trembling like I had Parkinson's disease. My mom, with her head tilted and a grin that was almost touching her cheeks, stared back at me, twitching her right eye for about five seconds before releasing me. Sure, my little peach pie. Anything for you, my dear. She boofed my nose with her finger and went back to the table. I blinked again and the color was black. The food was fine, and the porcelain plates, the fancy lace tablecloth, the light yellow roses in the vase, everything. I walked to my room, not being able to recognize a thing. My home looked like a mansion. But this wasn't my home, and those people downstairs were not my family. I finally stumbled to my room, getting lost in the maze of halls. I looked out of my window. It was unusually bright outside. The clouds looked fake, almost too perfect. And they weren't moving either. The grass was an unreal shade of green, with yellow and white flowers sprouted all around the street. All of our houses were the same too. The same design and shape, but different pastel colors. I cried for about 20 minutes when I grabbed my phone and I texted my next door neighbor, Annie. I didn't know her, but maybe the same things were happening to her. I copied our text chain. Here's the conversation. Annie? Hey, it's Harper. Do you remember what happened last night? Harper, you can come to my house. Something really strange is going on. I'm scared. Me too, Annie, but I can't leave. My parents and brother are. I saw Annie staring at me, waving and smiling out of my window. Sometimes we do see each other through our windows, but she doesn't say hi. Harper? Annie, why are you smiling at me like that? What the hell do you mean? Through your window, Annie, I can see you. There was no answer for about five minutes. Harper, I'm not doing that. That's not me and nobody's at my window. But I can see you waving and smiling at me. What the hell? What's happening? Why is everything the same? I don't know, Annie. Thinking about it now, it couldn't have been Annie. And the smiling Annie didn't even have a phone in her hand. Do you think that we're not in the same place? What? Like each of us, every single person in the neighborhood is in their own little messed up world. Harper, I tried leaving. I said that I was going for a bike ride. I biked to the exit of the neighborhood and there were these gates. I asked the nearest house for the code and they didn't answer. They just smiled at me and slammed the door in my face. Something tells me that I shouldn't try to escape. I feel like people are watching me. What? We don't have gates. So you're saying that I'm alone and no one here is them? I guess. I just don't want to believe it either. What is there to believe? I gotta go. 
My sister just called me down to play croquet. She doesn't even know how to do that, and I don't either. We don't even have a croquet set. Just act like them, Annie, and I think you'll be fine. That was the end of her conversation. She didn't answer, and hopefully she's okay. But then, I heard my brother coming up the stairs. As I heard my brother's light footsteps getting closer and closer into my room, all I could think of was, will he harm me? I didn't want to believe it, but I have to keep telling myself that it's not my brother. Remember what Annie said. I was caught off guard by my thoughts when I realized that my brother was standing at the entrance to my room. Shadows lurked behind him, even when the lights were turned on. May I come in, dear sister? He asked in the same emotionless, robotic tone. Um, yeah, sure, Chris. Come on in, I guess. I would have said it more nicely, and in a proper fancy way like the rest of my imposter doppelganger family. But I'm not used to being treated this nicely by my brother. He's only eight, and I do love him. Although he is a complete shithead, I couldn't bring myself to hurt him. It's just not in me. If he pulls any children of the corn shit, though, I wouldn't know what to do. He sat in front of me with great posture and his hands in his lap, looking up and grinning at me. Would you like to play a board game? Chris cheerily said. He tilted his head just like mom did. I was too afraid to say no, thinking of how my mother's grip got insanely strong when I left the table and then loosened when I acted all nice about it. Sure, buddy. What do you want to play? Chris cutting me off. Monopoly. He quietly stated, and the grin now gone, replaced with his head going down low, his deep empty eyes looking at me Pennywise style. He suddenly perked back up and that stupid grin was on his face again. All they do is grin. Oh, okay. I got up slowly and I got Monopoly, which was in his room. It used to be Chris's favorite game. Now it's Fortnite, which I despise with all my heart and soul. I looked at the box and a tear fell on it. Where the hell am I? I asked myself, falling to my knees. His room had a strange scent, like rotting flesh. Harper! Oh, Harper! What are you waiting for? Come on over here, silly. I went back to my room and then we played. He didn't even look at the game we played. He just gawked at me. It was getting dark out. And then I made a really big mistake. I won. He then slowly raised his head and he said, No. No what? Good game though. Maybe we can play again and... No, 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 no! His head violently shaking as his voice got deeper and deeper, almost growling. He started to charge at me. I got up and I tried to run, but my dad stopped me in my tracks. He looked at me and then looked at Chris who was an inch away from me. The dad stared at him with bloodshot eyes and quickly put his hand over his head. Chris stopped chanting gibberish and charging at me. He squeezed past me and he picked up Frozen Chris by the head and carried him off to his bedroom. I stood there with my mouth open for about two minutes, comprehending what had just happened. Out of frustration, I kicked the game board and threw all the fake money away. I was yelling when I heard my mother's voice, a regular sweet and tender voice. She was calling for me. She was yelling. I could only hear it faintly though. Harper, Harper. It was like music to my ears. I cried and I laughed. Mom? No answer. Mom? Still no answer. Mom, please answer me. Nothing. I landed on my knees again, cradling myself pathetically in my own tears. And then I heard a knock on the door. What troubles you, my dear? 
Mom number two said. I didn't answer though. I flinched when I felt her cold hand touch my shoulder. She whispered into my ear. I made some warm cookies for you. Uh, warm milk as well. It was oddly comforting. That all went away though when I turned around and I saw that stupid grin. I wanted to smack it off her face. It was so lifeless. I would like some. Oh good. She wiped the tears off my face and went to grab the platter of cookies off my dresser. It smelled delicious. But I remembered what happened with the pancakes before. She handed me the platter and the warm milk, and patted my back and gave me a cold kiss on the cheek. Call me if you need me, she said before leaving. I closed the door behind me when she walked away. Screw your stupid cookies, I know what you're doing. Looking up at the sky, you're trying to mess with my mind, huh? That won't work. It won't work. I threw the cookies into the spotless porcelain toilet and I flushed it down. After I had flushed it, black ooze started gurgling and bubbling out of the toilet. I yelped and I slammed the lid shut. I started to cry again and I drank my milk, as I was very thirsty. Thankfully, there weren't any maggots. I am enjoying these nice luxuries though. There is so much... Shit. I really need to get out of here. I stayed up late and I couldn't sleep anyways. I snuck downstairs to see mom number two and dad number two glaring at the fireplace, both holding a cup of coffee in the same position, the same hand. They didn't move so I tiptoed down the stairs to sneak out. Fatal mistake. A floorboard creaked and both of them snapped their heads at a sickening backwards angle, like the exorcist. They got up and charged to me like Chris did only faster and with grins still on their faces. I ran out of the door and I grabbed Dad's shotgun on the way out. It seems like they couldn't leave their house as they just watched me run away with the door wide open, with those stupid grins on their face. I sprinted until I was at the exit, only to be stopped by gates. I tried to climb over them, avoiding the sharp edges. I was almost free when an invisible barrier had stopped me. It burned my right leg really badly. I screamed in pain as I fell to the ground, and that blaring siren went off again. I must have triggered it somehow. I checked the time. 2.47 AM, just like last time. I eventually got myself up, only to find everybody in the neighborhood were leaving their houses, and they were walking towards me. I tried to run, but my burnt leg was no help. I limped as fast as I could, even though my neighbors were walking with some strange device. I shoved some people and shot some that were more aggressive. It was hard, but it helped knowing that these were not my neighbors. I eventually made it to the forest. Everybody was chanting my name in an angry voice, getting more and more intense until the point where they were screaming it. The voices were getting louder and so I ran faster. I was aware that I was running over bodies, bodies with their stomachs cut open perfectly. Their eyes were rolled back, but it didn't have any veins. They were all in the same perfect position, arms straight by their sides, legs straight and pointed. There wasn't blood, just a white milky substance and circular gray pods gushing out of their sliced bodies, sort of like bursting boba or the stuff they put in that boba tea. Whatever it was, it scared the hell out of me. It was like a graveyard for the imperfect. While getting out of there, trying to step over the mass of deceased bodies but failing miserably, I slipped and I fell down a hill, landing in a creek. I went to get up but the same distorted voice from the alert told me to stay in. I did. And before I knew it, something was pulling me under the water. A strong fast force that I couldn't fight no matter how hard I tried. I was being pulled down, a hole, in the creek. I started to lose consciousness as I went deeper and deeper into this hole. 
and then everything went black. I woke up in the same spot on the couch when I fell asleep with my family when the sirens had started. I was back in my sweatpants and purple dinosaur hoodie, but I was dirty, surprisingly not wet though. I got up and I looked around frantically. No one. I searched everywhere for the doppelgangers, holding up my gun while turning every corner. I think I'm back home. I left my house and I looked for Annie at her house, but no one. She was right. Everybody is in their world. I thought a hope was lost, but I remember that I could text. The creek. It's the way out of here. I went back down to the creek. There were more holes, multiple with names labeled on them. Kelsey, my mom. She had a hole. Even my hamster had a hole. Everybody in the neighborhood had a hole. What do I do? I tried texting, but there is no service, and no one is answering my calls. The police would not be able to handle this. But wait. I just got a text from another contact named Annie asking where I was. It's not the same person that I had chatted with earlier. That's it. I'm going down the holes. I'm getting my family and this whole neighborhood back. Or what's left of it. I grabbed my dad's shotgun that I had brought with me while escaping my fake home and I got in the water. I stepped into a sinkhole and soon again, I was in the other world. How am I not wet? I thought to myself. I walked out of the forest, past the bodies with orbs overflowing out of their mouth and I finally got to the neighborhood. The same pastel houses, the same motionless clouds. The same extremely green grass with a perfectly symmetrical flower pattern. God, I hated this place. But I needed to find my brother. I glanced at my fake home and I cocked the gun. As I was walking towards my house, Mrs. Bentley number two was outside watering her plants, frozen in a bent over position. The real Mrs. Bentley was very old, and she was in a wheelchair. It looks like her doppelganger had gotten an upgrade. I almost made it to my house when Annie number two suddenly appeared in front of me. How are you doing today, Harper? Smiling with that nauseating joker grin. Hey Annie, wonderful as always. How do you do? I gagged in my mind after saying that. Well, I'm just fantastic. Annie looked down on my shotgun and notices that I'm back in my hoodie with dirt all over me. Her smile turned into an expression of stare, and she started crying, again with no emotion. She started to walk closer. I backed up and she started screaming, charging at me. I pulled the trigger and I kicked her lifeless body. It was cruel, but I needed to know that she was dead. Her body convulsed for one second and then her mouth started gurgling the same white liquid as the people in the forest. Two men in white and blue suits came out of nowhere and walked next to each other at the same pace towards Annie number two. They picked her up and they walked her into the forest, not paying any attention to me. Neither did anybody outside. Maybe if I didn't acknowledge them or talk to them, they wouldn't freak out. I tested it out by randomly shooting Mrs. Bentley from a distance, not talking to her. No one paid any attention and they didn't even flinch. Another pair of men in suits took her into the forest. It worked. I realized how dark my thought was, but it was for the best. I finally got to my house and I slowly pushed the door open and I sneaked in. My family including Harper number two and my real brother were frozen at the breakfast table. They were just sitting there not eating anything. My brother looked happy but I knew that it was him. He just looked at the food and he didn't want to eat it, but it wasn't food at the table. It looked like flesh covered in those gray bursting boba orb thingies. I held up my gun, my fingers shaking at the trigger. I felt bad, but they're not my family, and that thought was the only thing that was keeping me sane. Hey! I tried to whisper, but I needed my brother to hear me. Hey! 
This time he looked over and he saw me. My eyes lit up at the sight of him. But he looked at me and he just nodded his head no. I think that he was signaling for me to leave and come back later. But I'm not taking that chance. I waited outside of the house for a while until they were done with their breakfast. I peered through the window. Nobody was still at the table. I went in the house and I walked past mom number two and dad number two. And I found my way to Chris's room. I saw him playing with a Rubik's Cube on his bed. Chris! I ran up and I hugged him. Harper, what are you doing here? If you're here to rescue me, I want to stay. It's so nice. What? I said baffled, extremely confused by what he had just said. Harper, it's dangerous here and you should go. And you heard me. I want to stay. I walked up to him and I sat down in front of him, grabbing his shoulders. Chris, what about mom and dad? They miss you a lot and I know they would want you to come back. Plus I didn't come all this way today to get attitude just because little whiny Chris wanted to stay. Go away! He screamed, pushing me. Okay, I I'm sorry. I'm not leaving without you though. Mom! Mom? Chris, that's not your mom. Yes, it is. God, he's brainwashed. I heard footsteps coming up the stairs. I hit Chris with my gun accidentally while turning around and knocking him out. I know, I know, but hey, at least he's coming with me for sure now. Soon enough, mom number two was standing at the doorway smiling, holding a freaking axe. She ran at me swinging it. She missed and hit the wall. And while she was trying to get it out, I shot her. I grabbed Chris and I ran. I made it to the world's and I found Mrs. Bentley number two and Annie two added to the pile of people, with their stomach cut open, pouring out the gray orbs. I got to the creek and I went back down Chris's hole. And then I got back to our real house, laid him down on the couch and tied him up in case he tried to escape or make things worse. I went back into the forest and I jumped into my mom's hole. I regained consciousness in the forest and I did the same thing. Go past the houses, Mrs. Bentley number two, everything. I winded up at the house then, I burst in, not scared to shoot. At least that's what I thought I was going to do. I walked in on my mom crying, clutching a knife in her hand with the doppelganger family tied up, not making a sound. They were on the floor, not even struggling. Mom? She turned around quickly, dropping the knife. Baby, oh my god. She ran over and hugged me tight, but then stopped and had a confused look. Wait, that's not you? No, I don't know what they are, but I have Chris back home. I knew that it wasn't you. She sighed in relief. I knew it. I tied you guys up because I didn't really know why I just... The neighborhood. It's so different. How did you get here and where are we? What do you mean Chris is back at the house? It's okay, Mom. I've been there. I'll explain everything that's happened when we get back. I grabbed her hand and we ran out to the forest. We stopped when we came across some of the neighbors circled around the dead bodies near the creek, holding hands. Their mouths were covered with that milky liquid. Jesus Christ, are they eating the bodies? My mom said. My mom grabbed me by the hand and started to run back to the neighborhood. No, we need to get to the holes to get back home. The holes? Trust me, let's go. We ran past what looked like a ritual and got to the creek. My mom stared at the sinkholes, baffled once again. I said to get in, but she hesitated at first, and then she eventually did. I was about to go, but I took one last look at the circled corpses. They were gone. I jumped in, waking up with my mom tugging at my shoulder saying, Wake up. I took her back to the house to meet Chris. I let her have her moment of happiness before telling her that dad and the rest of the neighborhood was still in those holes. I told her that I was going. 
She didn't want me to at first, but I explained to her everything that had happened. She should stay with Chris anyways. He looked terrified before he saw us, and he had his head on his knees and was sitting in the corner. I think he knew that everybody was gone. The neighborhood was dead. Empty. Lifeless. I hugged my mom and I went back into the forest. At this point, I knew what to do, but I had to be cautious at the same time. I stared at my dad's hole and I jumped in. Woke up, got up, and I started walking. Something was wrong. It smelled like something was burning, and I saw the dim orange light covered by smoke. All of the houses were on fire. Dad, I thought. I ran closer to the glowing light, covering my mouth and coughing, trying not to inhale the smoke. I searched endlessly through the streets. Behind the sound of the crackling, burning houses, I could hear the siren. I never hated a sound more than this one. I walked and walked until I saw somebody in the middle of the street. They were sitting. At first, I thought it was a doppelganger, but then I realized that it was my dad, talking to himself repeatedly saying, I killed them all. I killed them all. He had a box of matches in his hand. He had started the fires. I ran up to him and I grabbed his shoulder. He flinched and he pulled out a bloody cleaver, putting it down and realizing that it was the real me. Is that you, Harper? Yeah, come on. What the hell are you doing? I thought you were dead. I killed all of you. That isn't me. Everybody here isn't them. Just come with me. We need to get back. I pulled him through the smoke, struggling. I felt like I was going to pass out, but we needed to get out of here. I was not going to die here, and neither was my dad. The adrenaline of the moment helped carry us to the forest. We both fell to the ground, coughing until it felt like our lungs exploded. My dad crawled over to me and hugged me. I was really satisfied to have my family back, but I couldn't help thinking about Annie, or Jameson, my boyfriend. He lives in another neighborhood, but what if this is happening to everybody? It just can't be us. And if so, why just us? We had a fight before the sirens began, so I didn't text him just because I was mad at him. God, I can be mean at times, and I deeply regret it. My heart sunk the thought that he might be dead. Me and my dad got up, and I told him to get in his hole. He laughed. Something I didn't hear in a long time. I told him that it was our only way out. He refused, so I pushed him in. I chuckled and I went in after him. I woke up again to dad carrying me by my shoulders through the forest. I weakly told him that mom and Chris were at the house and to trust me and just go. He had always been stubborn, but this time he listened. He probably listened because he just wanted to at least have hope that they were alive. We arrived at the house, our mom anxiously waiting on the couch. I looked down. I was completely blackened by the smoke, and same with my dad. My mom greeted us and laid us down and got us a drink of water. I was extremely weak and tired, and my dad had a huge bloody gash on his back. It looked like he had gotten hit with an axe. Me and my family talked for a while. My mom thanked me. I don't know why, I just did what I had to do. It wasn't too long before I got up, wanting to go to find Annie's hole. My dad grabbed me before I could grab his shotgun. Honey, please, don't go. Dad. My mom put her hands on my dad's shoulder, hopefully to let me go to Annie's hole. Harper, you've been through enough. I can handle it. I whined. You almost died, Harper. Can we just sit through this, call the police, and figure it out? There's nothing to figure out, Dad. I can't figure this out, and neither can you. No one can. There's no explaining this. And the cops, are you kidding me? And the cops wouldn't even believe us. They wouldn't know what the hell to do. Think of their faces when we say the entire neighborhood are trapped inside these sinkholes in the Forest Creek. With doppelgangers. What would they say, Dad?
He sat there silent and took a deep breath, got up and went to his office, came back with a box of shotgun shells and handed them to me. If you're not back in a couple of hours, I'm coming to get you. All right, fine, but remember, if you enter any sinkhole, you have to leave out of any sinkhole. If you don't, I think you might get back to your own world, and you don't want to go back to yours. Got it. Now go before I change my mind, he said reluctantly. My mom and dad hugged me, and Chris waved goodbye. He looked happier compared to how he was before. I walked through the forest, and I stared at Annie's hole. I'm coming, Annie. Hang in there. I jumped into the portal, my consciousness slowly fading. I woke up, smelling the stench of corpses. While getting myself off the ground, I heard screams. I darted my way over to Annie's house. I opened the door and Harper number two crashed into me, while it seemed like she was trying to kill Annie. I fell to the ground and I met eyes with me. It was really strange seeing myself any other way than a camera or a mirror. Harper! I tried to respond, but Harper number two now had her hands around my throat, squeezing tighter and tighter, with that big fat grin on her face. Or my face, I guess. I tried reaching for my shotgun, but it was out of reach. We rolled around for what seemed like an eternity. I got on top of her and I started punching her like crazy, until my knuckles felt sore. She didn't stop and she was insanely strong. She eventually escaped my grasp and pushed me to the ground, strangling me again. Annie, I weakly said as I pointed at the gun. It wasn't long before I realized that she was fighting off her mom who had a cleaver. We're so screwed, I thought to myself defeated. But then Harper number two legs slipped, no longer pinning my full body down, and I got a hold of my legs back. I kicked her in the chest and I grabbed my shotgun. Before I could shoot her, she shot me with that weird device thing that people were carrying around when I tried to escape through the gates. I fell to the floor, Annie still fighting off her mom. Everything swirled and spun around me, until I closed my eyes. When I opened them, I was floating in what seemed like space, but dark gray with swirly clouds of white. It looked like an ink drop on water, or a paint spilled in water, like those iPhone Live wallpapers. Trippy, but I needed to get out of here. I swam through the dark mass, not finding any way out. I was losing hope. And then I saw me. Well, Harper too. I stared at her for a second, and then I went over to her. What do you want? I tried to ask firmly, but coming out weak. She didn't answer. She just snapped her head back at me, but this time she wasn't smiling. She had a look of intense fear. She looked at me and started clawing at her cheek. She clawed more and more until she was ripping her skin off. She peeled off a thick layer of flesh, revealing a gray, oily yet smooth surface. She kept peeling into a large oval-like gray head covered with slime appeared. It opened its yellow glowing eyes and screeched. That was the sound that I had heard when the sirens went off. It was the exact same. I turned around and I swam as fast as I could. The thing started following me, now in its full form. Covered in ooze, long huge spider legs with claws, and a see-through body filled with those tiny gray orbs. It tried impaling me with its legs a couple of times while making this weird clicking noise. It sounded like bone cracking. I came across another hole. I didn't know if it would do anything, but I jumped inside of it anyways. I just wanted to get away from that thing. I came back into Annie's world once again. I woke up in the same position with Annie still fighting her mom. I looked over and Harper number two was gone. I grabbed the shotgun quickly and I blasted Annie's mom number two. Annie looked at her mom and then looked at me. Annie, how long was I gone? 
like one second after the second version of you shot you. How did you get here? Annie sat breathless. It felt like I was gone for hours. I told Annie everything that had happened, including the holes. She didn't seem that shocked. I wouldn't have either after all of this. We went back to the forest and went through the hole. When we got back to my house, she said she wanted to go with me to find her parents. I hesitated, but I agreed. And so we did. Hours went by and we got her parents back. And her dog. And for those who are asking about my hamster, yes, Hamburger is alive and well. I'm not going to go into details because we basically did the same thing over and over again. Annie was reunited with her parents and her dog. She tried explaining to them what had happened, but called the cops anyways. They asked Annie's family and mine ridiculous questions. And they looked pretty baffled too, but we told them all the same story. It has been five days since this all happened. So they could just file a missing persons case on almost every person in the damn neighborhood. I didn't tell them about the holes though. I told everybody not to since they might quarantine it or something. I'm not really sure what the cops did. They searched the houses and then left. I was tired of getting people out of the doppelganger worlds, but I had to. I got one person out of a family and told them to go get their family and the rules. Exit through the portal you went in while getting somebody out. You should dress fancy if you can and act like them. Bring guns and everything else. And that sort of worked for everybody. Some people were too afraid to go in. Some came back with the dead bodies of their family. Some came out without their family, saying that they couldn't find them. But it was all happening very slowly. If more people are in there for any longer, they'll die. I couldn't stop thinking about the weird place I was in with that thing. I think that he's the cause of this. I have to find it and kill it. I went through Mrs. Bentley's hole with a backpack filled with weapons and I thought about how to make the doppelgangers get their weird weapons out. Why didn't they just shoot everybody with it when they had the chance? What makes them take it out anyways? The only time I ever saw them do it was when I was trying to escape through the gates and the sirens went off and when I was fighting myself. Maybe if they discover something that's imperfect, like me escaping through the gate, you're probably not supposed to do that or have two of the same people in one world. So I went to my house and I found myself. We fought and as soon as she had pulled out the strange looking gun and shot me, I waited and waited until I was in the space like void. I searched and I searched for the beast. I was going to give up hope when I heard that blood curdling screech. I could see it floating, yet charging at me at the same time. I'm absolutely terrified, but I had to kill this thing. I shot it with my gun. Useless. And the bullets deflected. Shit, I thought, how am I going to do this? While I was getting out a knife from the backpack, and the creature sliced my arm pretty bad with its sharp legs. I tried cutting its legs off to no use. It kicked me around like a soccer ball when I tried to get close to it. It was hard, but I got on top of it and I tried axing its head, and it broke the axe. Useless. It cut my cheek and the back of my leg. I crowded in pain, mostly from the pain and some from the thought that I may not be able to kill this thing. And then it spoke. You cannot, you cannot kill, kill me. me. In reverse. In reverse. Gather, the Gather the pieces. It said in the same strange layered voice from the alert on my TV. It felt like it was talking to my mind. While I was floating, holding my leg, I saw its stomach filled with pods. It was made of a different material than the steel-like legs, almost like a thin layer of jello. I also had a box of matches and I swam under the thing, grabbing onto its stomach. It jerked around and tried to reach me with its legs, but it failed. I got the matches out struggling to hold on to its oily smooth skin covered in slime. I cut open its stomach and I threw the match inside the little gray orbs. It let out a different screech this time. It sounded like defeat. I let go of its stomach and I swam past it, 
Seeing it now floated in the air, covered in flames, the thing struggled to shake off the flames. No, no cannot. cannot. You must, you finish. must finish. I must. I must. The, beautiful the beautiful and the dead. And the dead. After it said that, it started speaking gibberish like Chris did when we played Monopoly. I watched him burn until he couldn't speak anymore, and then I left. I soon found the hole and I got back to Mrs. Bentley's world. But when I got there, everything was on fire. All the doppelgangers on the floor in flames. It made me happy to see them all burn. What a dark thought, but whatever. I got Mrs. Bentley out of her world and I got back to the real one. When I woke up, I saw people who hadn't made it back from the holes yet. Everyone was back. They were unconscious outside of their holes. Some were awake already, confused and in a daze. I got them back to their houses and of course, a bunch of people did soon call the police. They thought that we were bullshitting all of this, but they were confused as well. I wonder why other people didn't go looking for some people in our neighborhood. But everybody is pretty spooked about this whole thing. I'm just glad that almost everybody is back though. Unfortunately, some didn't make it back though. Somebody called an ambulance for the injured and the deceased. I texted my boyfriend since I had signal again. But there is no answer. He must still be mad at me. I drove to his neighborhood and the streets were oddly empty. Only a couple of their cars were there, which is odd. We usually have a lot of traffic. I got to his eerily quiet neighborhood and I knocked on his door. No answer. I started to panic so I went in. No one is there. I ran to the houses and I searched everywhere. My god. There's no one here.